second consistency was it as a keen match match so uh, i think for that we actually need to override the equals and hash code method basically so that it behaves properly because uh, in the internal implementation of hash map uh, as soon as you do a put or get it actually calculates the hash code does a mod by capacity and then uh, checks if if uh, using the equals method if uh, some other you know object is equal to it then it actually replaces the value otherwise creates a new node so i think uh, if overriding the hash code and equals method will actually work okay uh, so now consider uh, hash code method returns a constant value so mm -hmm. how the hash map behaves in that case okay so in case hash code returns a constant value that means for every put you are actually going to get the same value so it is actually going to degrade the performance of hash map because every time uh, it will actually land up to the same uh, same bucket basically so so within one single bucket there will be a lot of uh, nodes that will actually be created okay uh what if i uh, implement uh, hash code uh, sorry implement equals but i do not implement hash code okay if you implement equals but you do not implement hash code so um, i think in that case basically uh, if you do not implement hash code it will actually uh, fetch the hash code from uh, this uh, object class uh, basically object class implementation so that is basically used uh, that actually uh, you know uh, it it will actually break the equals and hash code uh, contract and also uh, that will actually uh, you know use the object class uh, hash code implementation which internally jvm calculates based on addresses or some kind of algorithm so i think uh, in that case uh, th th this will be the implication of not uh, overriding the hash code method okay uh, so uh, what if i do not override uh, equals and only override hash code yeah so again uh, that will actually break the contract and apart from this if you do not override the equals method then uh, basically what will happen is Uh, suppose you have like a custom employee object right so you have e uh, for example based on your requirement there must be some employee id and name suppose you are just checking based on employee id and name in 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 your overridden equals method and now you are not not doing it so what it will do it will again use the implementation of uh, equals method that is there in object class so it actually compares the values apart from that it also compares the reference basically so if in case uh, you know you have two uh, objects which have same id and name but their reference is actually uh, different so in that case also it will actually uh, consider them as uh, unequal and 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 actually create a node of that particular object okay uh now uh consider i have a uh, student class okay i want to use it as a key in high or oh, sorry uh, i want to uh, okay so i have student class and i have a list of student objects okay do you have a student class and themes for this like you can do a list dot uh, streams and then you can do a dot sorted so sorted is is one of the intermediate operations um, that is provided into stream and then inside the brackets you can do s1 comma s2 and then you can use uh, the um, compare to method that comparable provides for sorting purpose so you can do e1 dot whatever is like suppose you want to sort on name so e1 dot get name uh, dot compare to and in the braces you can provide e2 dot get name so this will actually uh, sort based on name and and as the terminal operation you can do a dot collect collectors dot to list or to uh, set whatever is your requirement you can do that and return back 
Okay. Yeah. Is there any other way also, like, uh, yeah, uh, so any other way to do it as well without using steam? Yeah, then in that case, you can uh, simply use, uh, I mean, implement the comparator and, uh, 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 sorry, c comparable and do it. Like overriding the uh, compare to method, you can simply do this and inside list dot sort, uh, sorry, collections dot uh, sort basically you can provide list as your parameter and then you can provide the comparator that you have created for it okay, okay. now uh, consider our class person okay it has two attributes string okay. name okay and uh, list of string degree list of string degree okay uh, so, how will you make this class immutable? Yeah, so in order to make uh, this class immutable, basically I have to restrict it to be modified. So, I think uh, first of all the class uh, should be final so that it cannot be inherited and uh, no one can actually modify its behavior. Apart from that, uh, the member variables have to be private actually and uh, yeah and 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 also uh, you you actually cannot provide the setters so there will be no setters for that uh, and i think uh, apart from this uh, i think uh, that is the that that is the only way to actually do it hello yeah, yeah, so you said that we need to uh, not give any setter and uh, keep the class final. Yeah, so basically, uh, yeah, final and also the member variables has to be private so that none other class can actually, um, you know, access it. So they have to be private and final basically. Yeah, and, and I think uh, there is no setter required. Okay. Any other change we need to do? Okay. Apart from that, I think uh, we can actually uh, inside. Uh, so, so, so there will be just one way to create it, right? So inside the constructor, actually, I think we can perform the deep copy rather than uh, you know shallow shallow cloning. Sorry, deep cloning rather than shallow cloning. I think uh, that's it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, what are the benefits of uh, unmutable classes? What are the benefits of unmutable classes, is it? No, immutable. immutable. Okay, immutable is something that you actually cannot uh, modify. So uh, basically, like suppose a string is immutable in Java. So with that, uh, you mean to say if you have suppose string str is equal to a, b, c and you try to do um, str is equal to c, d, e. So it will actually not modify the original, uh, uh, original uh, you know, uh, memory location. It will create a new one and move the reference to that. So this is because of incons resolving inconsistency issues. So suppose... Um, like uh, multiple references were actually pointing to abc and if i modify if it is uh, mutable then that abc is modified to cd so automatically the value of the rest of the references will, will actually be updated so so that will uh, cause a certain inconsistency issue because of which we actually uh, uh, create immutable classes so that uh, the actual uh, memory location or the actual value is not updated a newer um, uh, memory location with the new value is actually created and we modify the reference to avoid inconsistency issues okay now uh, consider uh, we have uh, uh, class A 
Okay. It has a synchronized method of the code, a uh, synchronized ML. Okay. Uh, in uh, so it is public void synchronized ML, and in this method, I I'm just calling the uh, ten thousand. Sorry, please come again. Uh, inside M1, you are calling? Thread dot sleep uh, okay. 10,000. Okay, okay. Now we create uh, two objects of this class, O1 and O2. Okay. I call O1 dot M1 in one thread and O2 dot M1 in other thread. Okay. And then I start both the threads together. Okay. Uh, so what will put up here? So basically, like uh, sleep actually doesn't uh, release the resources. So uh, as you are doing, you are using synchronize. So actually, whatever thread will actually uh, enter it first will actually acquire a lock, and it will sleep for that particular period of time. And then, uh, so so basically, uh, other thread will actually not be able to enter. Because uh, it is it is actually uh, synchronized on the same uh, object uh, uh, in, into uh, same object into which it is actually trying to acquire the lock. So basically, um, it will it will actually uh, stop the second thread to enter the synchronized uh, block uh, until the first thread has performed its its task. One once it is done it will release the lock and then only the other thread will be able to enter into M1 method. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the two threads will block each other? Uh, not exactly block. I mean, yeah, yeah I mean, uh, only one will uh, go inside one thing. And uh, there will be no pillar. Yes. Okay. What is the difference between object level and class level synchronization? Yeah, so basically object level is there on objects so where class level is entire entirely on class. Just to explain with an example, like right now you mentioned that we had a syn synchronized method into which uh, uh, that particular thread uh, was not able to go. So suppose I have two methods M1 and M2 and I am using static synchronize so that will have a class level lock. So even my uh, first thread uh, with stat the class level lock even my first thread is actually in M1 the second thread will actually not be able to even execute M2. So that is class level lock that uh, onto that class you cannot actually even uh, if, if one thread is having an access to one particular method it even uh, this uh, the second thread cannot access the second method that is in inside the entire class that that is entire class level lock basically and if you talk about object level lock so that is a sim uh, that is just limited to a particular object so so that is specified with uh, like uh, just a synchronized keyword and uh, in that case if suppose right now you mentioned that in m1 uh, one thread can go so other thread can execute m2 if that is object level lock otherwise uh, in class level uh, the other method will also be locked basically so, so previous example was class level or object level yeah that was uh, you were using synchronized only so that was object level lock okay yeah. So the threads will, uh, only one will go or both? No, for single method basically if you are doing an object level lock uh, and, and it is uh, basically uh, for, for object so only one thread will go. If you have suppose couple of methods, right? Then uh, you will need class level lock because see one one particular method has one uh, has a uh, one particular method can be executed by one thread and another method can be executed by other thread simultaneously but one method will be actually accessible by one thread only okay yeah. so uh, consider we have a planning class okay 
it has two methods walk and run uh, sorry please come again which which methods walk and run okay okay uh, now uh, we have a child class which overrides both the methods okay uh both child class methods just for the respective super implementation okay um parent class 